नमस्कार वेलकम टू मैथर्स मैथर्स मीन्स मैथमेटिक्स एंड यूनिवर्स दे टूगेदर कंबाइन टू गिव मैथर्स नाउ इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू एक्स आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू द प्रीवियस वन दैट वन वॉज द सेट थ्योरी सो इट इज द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन सेट थ्योरी इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई टॉक अबाउट सेवरल सेट्स टाइप्स ऑफ सेट सबसेट सुपर सेट नाउ टूडे आई बिगिन माई डिस्कशन With subset and superset concept only. Okay. We know that A and B are two sets. Okay. If this thing happens that all the elements of B is contained in A, if this thing happen, I should make this one a little bit larger. If this thing happen that all the elements of B is contained in A, A, then we say that B. is a subset of a now here three cases can possible so the three cases are case 1 case 1 may happen that b is actually phi set or the null set okay it means that b is equal to phi set now phi set is the subset of any set because phi set mean it has nothing so which itself does not have anything then it can be thought that it is contained in everything okay like in every like in every set the set that doesn't has anything that can be contained in every set okay that's why b is a subset of any set and in our discussion here it is a but this set particularly this set as a very unique and special name it is known as trivial subset of a okay another case may be may happen this one that these two sets are actually equal like all the elements of b belongs to a only and a doesn't have any more element than b okay then if b is equal to a and obviously a set contains itself it is again a subset and it is known as it is known as improper subset improper subset of a the last one which is intuitive uh, i mean in our intuitive intuition sorry what i am saying in our intuition or i mean as we can understand from the very name of subset that this set contains this element these elements are contained in a i mean a contains entire b but after that also a has some more elements even if a has one more element then then we say that b is properly contained in a and it is known as proper subset of a proper subset of a okay so these are the three three type of subsets now in some books in some books these two sets subsets are known as improper subset these two books are known as uh, sorry these two type of sets are known as improper subsets like uh, i have said uh, this one only improper subset but some book add this one also but if you write this one as trivial subset and this one as improper subset then there is no problem at all and one more thing Uh, in the sign of subset i have written this or sometimes this why it is so like when we are uncertain about two quantities in our normal mathematics we write this one thing that x is either less than or equal to y the same thing happens here also when you are not certain whether like if the case happened here Here actually a is equal to b. But when we are not certain whether 
a is equal to b or not, then we shall write that a is a subset of b. Okay, I took uh, this one b as subset of a, but I have changed it here. Okay, it's not a problem. Just focus on a, on this thing that when we are not certain whether it is sub it is proper subset or improper subset, then we use this sign. Okay, I mean this one. Just compare with equal to uh, less than or equal to sign. Okay. Okay. Then this one was the first portion. Second is, I am talking about subsets for a long time, but can I say how many subsets of a set can have? Like, if I have a set, like one, two, three other elements, then what can be the possible subsets? Let me find out. A1 be the phi set, phi set is the subset of every set. Another possible subset is A itself. Next, I can take another more subset, 1, 2. Okay. I can take another subset like uh, 2, 3. I can take one more as the 2 itself, or another one as 1 and A7, another one as 3. And I can take another more set which is 1, 3. Now see, out of all the possibilities, like taking a subcollection of these three, I mean taking some of them at a time and presenting them as a new set, that process cannot be extended after this. Only this eight can be the possible subsets of this set. Okay. So it is clear from this discussion that this set has eight subsets. Okay. Now let me extend this one. Let me extend this one and let me say this set has elements starting from one to hundred. Okay. Now don't even dare to find out this one, the process I gave here. Okay. To find out the number of subsets that will not only exhaust this board, but also take the world. Okay. So we should find a particular formula, a general formula, so that it can be applicable for any number of elements for a set. Like uh, one thing, cardinal number is another thing. The number of elements of a set is known as cardinal number, like and it is denoted by this one. This means, this expression means there are n elements in A or in set A. Okay, this expression means this one. Then I'm interested to find out number of elements in the power set of A. Now, what is the power set? Power set of A, it is known as power set of A. Power set of A is the set, set of all subsets of A. Okay? Like, I have found out the subsets of A and then I have put them inside a new set and that new set will be known as the power set. Okay. So if we find out what is the cardinal number of power set, the key is the number of elements inside the power set. If I can find out that, then I shall get the number of subsets for a set of A. Okay. Now let me find out. See. As I said before, let me assume A has A elements, okay? Now, there is one thing known as combination. Combination is written by this one. And mathematically, this one is N factorial divided by N minus N factorial into M factorial. Where uh, N factorial means 1 into 2 into 3 into dot 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 up to N, okay? What it, why this one is used and what is the uh, purpose of it? See, it says that 
if I have total n things, it may be anything, and I am taking m out of them. Okay. Now, how many possible combination can I have? Like I have here four pens, and out of them, I want to take two at a time. In how many ways I can do that? Like I can take these two, or I can take these two, or I can take these two. I can do it in several ways. This combination give us idea uh, that uh, I mean the uh, quantitative idea in how many ways I can do that. Like in how many ways from n elements I can take n elements. What is the application here? Like I am finding that how many ways in how many ways I can take n elements from this n elements. If I can find that for a particular m, then I shall realize that how many sets can be possible with this much number of elements. Okay, let me show you. Like if I want to take, if I want to find out that how many subsets can be formed or how many different combinations can be formed, like the number of combination is equal to number of sets, possible sets. Okay, so how many sets can be possible? with zero elements from n so n c zero this much of a uh, this much of set can be possible with zero elements obviously zero element mean the uh, five set actually this one which i am talking about next let me find out how many set can be formed or how many combination different combination can be formed from n set if from n elements taking one element at a time that one is nc1 in a similar process nc2 dot 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 finally nc n minus 1 nc n it means i have taken two elements at a time and found out all the possible uh, subsets that can be formed okay see this n minus 1 elements i have taken at a time and i have uh, wanted to see how many elements can be formed from this n elements. Sorry, how many sets can be formed from this n elements? And last one is so. Then, if I want to find out total number of sets from this n elements, I simply have to add them. And when I have added them, and those who has, I mean, those who have studied the binomial theorem already, they can understand that this one is one plus one to the power n that is equal to two to the power n. Okay. So, this 2 to the power n is equal to the cardinality of power set or I can say that if A has n elements, then A has 2 to the power n number of subsets. Okay? Here's a very important result that we shall use later. Now, when I have said about the cardinal number, uh, no, I don't think there is a proper time to teach the countability and uncountability of a set. But uh, if I get time after completing all the lectures, then I shall obviously make a video on countability and uncountability. Okay. Before Doing that, let me go to Venn diagram. Venn diagram is not only important from the viewpoint of set theory, but it is used in say, solving several GI related problems. Okay, so those who are preparing for competitive examinations also, if they watches the video, watches this video from this point forward, I think it will be beneficial for them also. Okay. Before coming to Venn diagram, let me talk. Let me talk about the universe. What is universe? Hmm? Universe means we all are under reach. I mean, we all are inside reach. Okay, this is a quite type of vague uh, explanation of universe. Uh, see, right now. I'm on earth and earth 
is a member of the of the family of sun then this or this solar family of the solar family is a part i mean is inside the milky way galaxy and our milky way galaxy is some kind of spiral spiral type of galaxy it is we are living in this portion like in a outer suburban of the galaxy uh, remember this if this one is the milky way galaxy this simple point here means our entire solar system and maybe some more also okay there are millions billions maybe trillions of this type of galaxy in our known universe universe means outside of which we cannot think anything okay every galaxy star and everything which is contained inside which that is known as universe like uh, if i want to say it from a viewpoint of big bang theory it says in the beginning of time maybe it uh, 13.7 billion years ago there was one point which had no dimension i mean which was just a point but it has it had infinite mass it exploded and it created space and time just think that we are living at this moment in space and time is passing by but that moment in the big bang everything was created from that moment time was created space was created so it happened what now huh? the energy that i mean that came from the blast from the big bang concentrated and formed a universe okay now some says that there can be more universes that is multiverse theory which is made which says if anyone is interested of the multiverse theory they can obviously watch the lectures of brand green that is very beautiful okay so let me forget multiverse for a second and let me imagine that there is only one universe in which we are living okay this is that universe now we cannot imagine anything outside of this universe we are living here our known galaxies all our known physics is limited in this world i mean in this universe but can i think about outside of it no so it means one thing that we are limited in this universe it means all our thoughts all our imagination is limited in it or in a nutshell i can say whatever we do is limited in this okay if this is my universe and in the universe is a set obviously universe is a set and this set of the universe i am another set why i am a set because i am a well defined obviously i am well defined collection of distinct objects we step of distinct object now not like eyes ears no this is not a distinct objects i am the well defined collection of protein nucleic acids carbohydrates amino acids dna rna and so many other things i am the well defined collection of that not only me i mean any human any animal any rock anything is a well defined collection so everything is a set at this moment i am a set like this the, uh, the this board is also a set it contains i think uh, um, polymer molecules so that is again a set polymer molecules has carbon and hydrogen in it again a set set of molecules we all are the sets of set of molecules like one thing i can say here i think i do i don't know whether i should say it or not we all are a collection of these things your protein carbohydrate fat and we need vitamins water and some minerals okay we haven't taken anything from outside we haven't taken anything from the other universe whatever we have taken taken from here and we the same protein the same molecule same molecules are running among all human being still we differentiate because 
still we say that guy is different from me from me i don't know why it will do so okay that is another topic but here what i was saying if this is the universe this is a state of universe that we write it by you and i i must say it in that universe so can i say that this is me this is my set here obviously i can say and don't think like uh, here while drawing the <laughs> schematic diagram of the galaxy i said if this one is a galaxy then this drop uh, this uh, one point is our entire solar system and like that no here it is not like that that i that i drawn only to make you all understand that what is the span of our galaxy actually is but what actually i am doing this is denoting that i am inside i mean the state of me is inside this universe okay now let me extend this idea to a set theory i imagine that for every set for every set a b c anything any abstract set there is one universal set u okay and in that u a is one set b is one set a b these are sets okay what is this thing this is some kind of diagram i have drawn here right this diagram is known as venn diagram venn diagram is actually nothing but a schematic representation of several sets and from that we shall pictorially uh, explain the properties like intersection union and everything okay so let me start more formally we know uh let me draw the number line there is 1 2 3 dot 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 when i have only these numbers okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to it goes on and goes on then i have this set set of all natural numbers when i am including this zero i have set of all positive integers when i am including all negative numbers or negative integers then i have set of all integers now i am including now the fractions like here is 3 by 2 here is 5 by 2 i am including all these possible fractions then i get set of all rational numbers okay these are proper proper subsets and when i have got rational numbers then i am including a rational number set those who don't know what actually a rational number is they go for my lecture on logarithm there i have explained uh, irrational numbers in brief but in a corner i mean in a compact way okay again i can say that rational numbers are those numbers which cannot be written as p by q form where p belongs to set of all integers and q belongs to set of all natural numbers in this form the numbers that we cannot write is known as irrational numbers and in irrational number the famous two irrational number is obviously pi and e okay one thing that i should have told you before you just search for this thing which i am writing ramanujan machine okay ramanujan machine you just search for that i am not saying what it is and what is the purpose of it which type of machine is it or whether it is a machine or not i am not saying that you obviously know who is ramanujan he is our you know who you all know who he is uh, the you know inspiration not inspiration actually like uh, rajnikanth of all mathematicians ramanujan is the rajnikanth of all mathematicians so you know about ramanujan but you i don't think that you know about ramanujan machine it is a very recent discovery the paper on this has been published on 20th july of this year only a, a few days ago so you guys go for it search in the youtube or google anywhere i think you shall get very good lectures okay 
Okay, so if I include the irrational numbers with this rational number, then I get set of all real numbers. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about set of all natural numbers, and I'm saying that set of all natural number is the subset of this one, I can consider Z plus as the universal set for N. Okay. When I'm extending that, I can say Z itself is the universal set for Z plus and N. Again, I'm extending it. I can say rational set of natural numbers is the universal set for Z and Z plus. I'm again extending it. Then R is becoming my universal set. If you want to extend it anymore, do it. Set of complex numbers is our new universal set. Move from that. R2, there's a Cartesian plane. When we, what we use while solving coordinate geometry problems, this entire portion, this one is R2. R2 is again the universal set for all of them. Let me move here. R3. What is R3? The space where we are living at this moment. Okay. This one is again universal set for all of this. Now in this way, proceed to R to the power n. Let n be any possible integer. Okay. In this way, according to this set, I mean according to the set which I am discussing, our universal sets can vary. But actually, this is not the proper explanation. This one I just uh, used for the sake of understanding. But actually, universal set means the, the set that contains everything. So, let me move to Venn diagram now. In Venn diagram, what we do, now I am coming formally to Venn diagram. We draw one rectangle here and we denote this as U or the universal set. It means the points inside this rectangle represents the universal set. Okay. And this U is the collection of all sets possible. I mean, U contains all the sets. Here, I have two sets. One B, one B A, and another B B. Okay. Now, when I am overlapping these two sets here, I have overlapped them now. It means that there are some common points between the sets. Okay, there are some common points. It means that the sets are not disjoint. Disjoint set means A intersection B is equal to 5. If I wanted to draw disjoint set here, what would I have done? Simply, if I draw the sets in this way, Okay, see, there is no overlapping between the sets, therefore, it is a um, disjoint set. These two sets are disjoint set. Okay, but let me work with the, I mean, let me work with the sets which are not disjoint. And one thing, in Venn diagram, we use circular regions, though these two are not circular, so some kind of oval thing. We use circular type of region. To denote the sets. Okay. Now, from this diagram, I shall denote or represent several known set operations. Like the A union B will be represented by why? Because A union B is the collection of all points of A and B. Like we have taken points of A. And we have taken points of B and together I have kept them in one place. Okay. So, these lines, these lines actually mean that I have taken entire of the sets. Okay. Again, if I want to draw A intersection B from the same two sets, A and B, what will it be? Yes, the overlapping region, the region here. Okay, this will be actually the intersection portion. Okay, 
very good next let me move to what about the complement a complement now what is a complement a complement says that those elements belong to a complement which does not belong to a okay so from Venn diagram we can show it if this is my universal set and this set is a then the elements which doesn't belong to a are these elements okay these all elements are elements of a complement and uh, in Venn diagram we denote a complement by this next comes the difference a and b are two sets and a minus b that is what we want to find out from the Venn diagram is it, oh, oh sorry 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 this should look like a rectangle okay this should not look like uh, any card place so this is you this universal set now I want to find out a minus b you guys may ask that why I am using that uh, overlapping situation uh, overlapping section here these sets may be disjoint yeah they may be disjoint but that is not my concern here because disjoint they are not disjoint they have some overlapping situation uh, overlapping section it means that their intersection is non uh, non negative I'm, oh, what i am saying their intersection is non null it is a complexity here if i don't have any overlapping section now then that is a simplification so if i can find something in a complex situation then obviously i will be able to solve it in simple situation also okay now a minus b is defined by those x which belongs to a but does not belong to b so what are the elements which belongs to a but doesn't belong to b this much question okay so this is my a minus b now i shall prove i shall prove a few a few expressions i mean a few formula of a set theory using venn diagram okay the first one is a union a is equal to a and a intersection a is again equal to a this is known as idempotent law i don't think that there is any need to prove this because a union a means i am taking i am taking elements of a i am taking elements of a and i am combining them and keeping them on point at one place so what we shall get we shall get a only because i haven't taken any other element again for intersection i have two sets a and a and i am taking common portion of them so what is the common between me and me obviously me only that's why it is a and a now for commutative law let me prove the commutative law what is commutative law commutative law says a union b is equal to b union a and a intersection b is equal to b intersection a you guys will think that this is very obvious but does this type of thing happen always let me show you an example 2 minus 3 and 3 minus 2 are they equal indeed not this one is minus 1 this one is 1 and these two are not equal so commutativity doesn't hold always okay it doesn't hold in you know uh, when you shall study group theory in future where binary operations will come then it will be seen that commutativity will change so many things 
okay but for here this is our formula now i don't think that there is any need of venn diagram here because a union b it means the elements from a and b are taken and kept one place in one place and b union means elements taken from b and taken from a and kept in one place so these two doesn't make any difference next comes the associative law what is this thing? Historical, okay. I'm just changing the bracket again. You guys can say that this happens always. No, of course not. Just watch this one 2 minus 3 minus 5 and 2 minus 3 minus 5. This one is minus 2 and minus minus plus, so 4. And this one is minus 1 and minus 5, so minus 6. Obviously not equal. So associativity doesn't always hold. Associativity holds for addition, multiplication, but associativity doesn't hold for subtraction as I as I have shown here. Okay, let me prove this one. Okay, uh, I shall prove it for its intersection counterpart. That is this one. I am writing and drawing this portion in the left side and this portion in the right hand side. There are three sets. A. Oh. B and C. A, B and C. It is a universal set. Then let me first find out A intersection B. So A intersection B means this much portion. Okay. And here B intersection C. What is B intersection C? Is this much portion? This much portion is B intersection C. Okay. Then take intersection with C here. So if I take intersection with C, I shall get this much portion. This much portion I have got. Here. And here, if I take intersection with A, then it will be this much portion. So actually they are same in both the diagrams. Therefore, it is understood that this expression holds. Next. Next is a very important one. Okay. Next is a very important one. And it is known as D modulus. See, according to De Morgan's law, the complement, the whole complement, is actually changing the intersection to union, union to intersection. Okay? You guys will understand the importance of this formula while solving the problems. Let me solve it for this one, for the intersection. U, U, A, and B. A and B. Now, A union B. First of all, I find out A union B. Then A union B is the entire portion. This one is A union B, A union B. And here, I have to find the complement of A union B. What is the complement of A union B? The points that doesn't belong to A union B. It means all this region. All 
all this region is A union B intersection. Let me come here. It is simply seen. The A intersection, if I want to find A intersection, then A intersection is everything except A. It will leave only A and it will exhaust entire B also. Go down this point. And B complement will be everything except A. Uh, everything except B. So the B complement will exhaust A also. Now, when I am discussing about the intersection, so I have to take the common portion, okay, common portion of these two sets. And remember one thing, when I am drawing the straight lines now, when I am drawing the straight lines, then the portion where there will be intersection, and when there, I mean, when the different lines will intersect, that portion will be inside the intersection, okay? So, I can see from this diagram only A, B, this portion is left and here also only A, B, this much portion, that is this much portion is left, except that everywhere there is intersection between this blue and black lines. So, it is seen that both the Venn diagrams are equivalent. Hence, it is proved. In this way, all other properties can be proved. And I give one homework here, which I don't know whether you guys will solve or not. That is the distributive law. A union B, in, uh, I mean A union B intersection C is A union B intersection A union C. See, it seems that A union, A and union, this one once as paired with this B and taken a place, then there is one intersection in between and then again A union B has paired with C and make his appearance here. Okay. Uh, we can do it for the other one that is A intersection B union C also. Then it will be A intersection B union A intersection C. Okay, so try to do it by yourself. There are some other uh, formulae which are very simple. One of them is A union universal set. Is a universal set. Obviously. All points of the universe are the points of me. Me, if I put them together, what I shall get? Obviously, the universe only. So, this will happen. Now, A intersection the universal set, it is again A because the common point between a set and the universal set is obviously the set itself. Next is A union phi is A. It is justified because. Uh, A has some points and I am taking the points from the set that is the phi set which has no point. So when I combine them what I shall get? I shall get only A. Here you can think about adding with 0. When we add with 0 we get the same thing and when A intersection phi it is indeed phi because the common point between some set and the phi set I mean the set that has nothing and the set that has something. What will be the common between them? Nothing. Nothing will be common. So phi is again the intersection. Okay. So I think that's it all for today. In the next lecture, I shall show how to use this formula and I shall solve some problems. Okay. Uh, you guys, I have... I think I have told the books before. Again, I am saying one book is R.D. Sharma. R.D. Sharma's book is, I think, one of the best books I have ever seen. And for those who are studying in West Bengal, go for them, obviously, SND. 
SND is like uh, Bible, Quran, Gita for West Bengal Board students. And you guys can take this another book, Saint Chattopadhyay. Saint Chattopadhyay's book. There are some other books also uh, that depends on the taste of the reader. Okay. So this was for today. And someone asked me to provide some problem set, but uh, that is not prepared yet. But I hope that from the next lecture onwards, I'll be able to provide them in PDF format. Okay. So thank you guys for watching the video. Watch it again and again until you understand the art of drawing Venn diagram. And if there is any trouble, any doubt, ask me through WhatsApp or Facebook or my email ID is also given there. I shall try to solve those as clearly as possible. Maybe in videos or maybe uh, I shall solve them and send it. Okay. Okay. Like the video, share it among your friends and foes and subscribe the channel, please. Okay. That will help me to grow my community. Then that's it. Namaskar. Jai Hind.